TV Filthy Frank is in my opinion one of the most important YouTube channels in the history of the site. George Miller, the creator of Filthy Frank, had crafted a character which perfectly embodied YouTube's mantra, broadcast yourself. On no other website and on no other media platform would Filthy Frank's repulsive, shocking and alternative style of humour succeed to the heights it did on YouTube. From rambling into a camera to creating his own law-based backstory, Francis of the Filth resonated with fans. I think a lot of internet humour these days revolves around absurdity and ridiculousness in the name of satire. As stated on his channel description, Filthy Frank is the embodiment of everything a person should not be. The character was never supposed to be relatable, but the humour was. The humour was relatable in a way that wasn't this excessively absurd before, while being accessible and popular. Filthy Frank filled a void that people didn't really know existed before he became mainstream on YouTube. I think this made his transition to Joji difficult for a lot of fans of Filthy Frank. Joji's original music videos were littered with references to Filthy Frank, and his Twitter post discussing the end of Filthy Frank was a tough pill to swallow. Joji has gone on to be incredibly successful. It seems as if the general consensus these days is it's sad that Frank is gone, but George should be doing what he loves, which is a sentiment that I couldn't agree with more. The Filthy Frank videos are still readily available on YouTube for you to enjoy. I also feel like with the adpocalypse and demonetization issues on the site now, he probably left at the right time. If you were a Filthy Frank, trying to make it as a Filthy Frank on YouTube, you couldn't do it now. Would he be able to exist on YouTube today? I'm unsure. What I am sure of, however, is that the void he once filled for his style of humour is now empty. How do I know this? Because people are trying to fill it. There are a number of Filthy Frank clones that currently exist. I'm not talking about channels that are clearly influenced by Filthy Frank, such as EMH and Sean Co Productions. There is obviously a difference between being a copycat and being heavily influenced by something. I'm talking about channels that are using the Filthy Frank Universe IP for their videos. The majority of these clones are not very well received, having a poor like to dislike ratio. This could be for a number of reasons. A poor impression, lacklustre humour, no originality or creativity, or merely a moral issue with stealing the Filthy Frank IP, and probably some other reasons too. There are a couple of other channels, however, that have been significantly better received. The first I want to talk about briefly is simply called Filthy Frank. This channel is in its infancy, which was a surprising theme across all of these channels. I couldn't find much information on the channel, as it's only existed for two weeks, but in that time, he has amassed nearly 1,000 subscribers. The overall impression is solid, especially the voice, and his humour is on point, so good luck to him. There are two other channels I wanted to discuss more in depth though. The first of these channels is Lotus. Out of all the channels I found using the Filthy Frank IP, Lotus is probably the most creative. Most often, she uses her own original characters and one time she got Bald Internet Man to make a cameo, the same guy who played Dade in the original Filthy Frank videos. I think the way in which she goes about her videos, in terms of creativity, originality and references, pays homage to the original series and respects it better than any of these other channels. She also can't be criticised for impersonating Frank badly, because she's not trying to impersonate Frank. I think the only significant issue this channel has is with its humour. It's not that Lotus isn't funny, sometimes she is, but sometimes it doesn't hit. I think there's a number of reasons for this. Although Lotus is more experienced than the Filthy Frank clones, her channel is still in its infancy when compared to the original Filthy Frank. It took George years to develop the Filthy Frank character on the Disaster Music channel. I also think there is a lack of production quality in certain areas. Sometimes her shots look visually good, but sometimes the audio is so poor outside you can't hear what's being said, and this gets in the way of the humour. Filming is much harder than people think, and I'm sure as she produces more and more videos, she'll improve in this area. Anything for Views reviewed her channel, and I think his conclusion is a perfect evaluation. I see potential, you know, she's only done, you know, six videos, okay? There is potential, all right? Stop trying to be like him, though. Be yourself. Be yourself, all right? What gives this channel credibility is that aspects do differ between Lotus and both Filthy Frank and the average clone. If she pushes her individuality while focusing on improving her already decent comedy and production, I think she could be quite successful. However, I did say there were clones, and I wouldn't necessarily throw her in that boat. There is one channel I would undoubtedly call a clone. 
TV Filthy Frank 2 is a continuation of the story of Filthy Frank, explaining the change in appearance as being reborn as a white Filthy Frank. Whether you agree or disagree with creating a copycat channel, you cannot deny that Eli, aka EJN Rules, does an extremely good job of copying the Filthy Frank character. The voice sounds very similar, and some of the mannerisms are incredibly accurate. The creativity, or lack of, feels like a double-edged sword. At first glance it appears that he's blatantly ripped off George's video ideas, which is somewhat true. However, he does have to come up with his own comedy and continuation of the lore. He could also return to his previous channel for more creative freedom. That currently does not look likely, but it's certainly an option. What I think is more noteworthy though, is that his so far strict copying of George's video series has played into Eli's favour. His impersonation being so fantastic, in conjunction with the video format, almost gives these videos a small sense of nostalgia, especially when you consider his humour. It's not as good as the original Filthy Franks, but it's certainly good enough. There's always going to be diehard fans of George, who feel like this is either an attempt to steal views from the success of another channel, or rip off the original creator with no respect. I'm personally inclined to disagree with this sentiment. I think as long as the humour is there and a very baseline level of creativity exists, then I'll continue to watch. The opinion that matters the most though is George's. I could see him being flattered and find this endearing. I could also see him being annoyed about someone stealing his IP. It really depends on what he values, but I don't think we'll ever find out. I don't think George will comment on Filthy Frank for a very long time, based on both his Filthy Frank Twitter page being all but deleted and him being very focused on Joji. If I had to though, I'd guess he'd probably be okay with all of this. Eli has been extremely successful so far, but TV Filthy Frank 2 is even more in its infancy than Lotus. I'm extremely interested in seeing where he takes the series. Personally, I hope he makes more videos like Filthy Frank Reborn and less like Loser Reads Hater Comment 6. The latter is not particularly bad in any way, but the former appeared to have a lot more effort put into it, and I think people would probably appreciate that more. So what do you think of these channels? Are you a fan? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you liked this video, please remember to give me a like. I make videos about YouTubers, both big and small, as well as videos about the platform itself. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.